Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette in our series, Cutting It Apart. In today's video, we'll be cutting apart north of $2,000 worth of belts. Why? Well, so you don't have to. We'll examine what you get when you buy a $790 belt all the way down to a $84 on sale belt from Ellen Edmonds. <laughs> We'll be cutting apart an Hermes belt, which retails for $790, a Fort Belvedere belt, which retails for $240, a Brooks Brothers belt, which retails for $98, a Mont Blanc belt, which retails between $320 and $400, a Gucci belt, which retails for $490, and a an allotment's belt, which retails for $120, but I think on sale they're more like an $80, $84 range. First, let's quickly take a look at the buckles and then cut the leather apart. First off here, Allen Edmonds, it's a traditional belt buckle um, sewn on that can be removed. It's a belt loop here. Get the buckle comes right out. It says solid brass and then uh, am and row. A-M-A-N, am and row, solid brass. You can see there's the uh, plating basically here and that's the buckle of the elements belt. Now on the Gucci belt here, you see we have the original part here. It's all brand new. Gucci made in Italy. Um, let's cut it apart. Heavy, heavy buckle. Also seems to be like solid brass and um, quite, quite a good weight. You can tell it's solid. Much better than the Ellen Edmonds buckle. But you can see over time, it's definitely a thicker, thicker plating. Next up, we have the Brooks Brothers buckle. Now here it says made in Italy. I don't know if it's brass or what it is. Now you can actually see I'm cutting into the buckle and it's all remains silver. There's no brass that comes through. Here we got a Fort Belvedere buckle. And one of the things that we did with our buckles that a lot of people don't do is we chose an extremely thick palladium and gold plating, which is 10 times thicker than what you usually get, just so it lasts. Well, what it also means is palladium uh, is expensive and gold is also very expensive. And so it's just, um, yeah, a very expensive buckle. Solid brass, made in Italy, meant to last you for a long time. Um, different men. Uh, wear buckles differently depending on how much they sweat and oftentimes in cheaper buckles you can see after a while they show their age with these buckles that's not supposed to be the case they should last you for a very long time now here we got the Hermes buckle um, individually costs $335 the belt is I think $455 so a total of $790 it's very nicely finished you can see it's like matte in the back shiny on the side. Um, looks like a nice piece. It says it's made in France. Looks like it's all silver throughout. There's no information on their website as to what exactly it is that they have. Now, next up, let's cut the belts apart. The um, Mont Blanc belt here, I lost the buckles. I've had them for years. Um, you can see I wore it. It even like opened up by itself just by wearing it and uh, when I had that experience I was like I want belts that don't just do that but I want belts that actually last so that was my inspiration for for Belvedere belt line and you can see here this one opens up very easily on its own because the thread is just not that thick that's it two layers of leather. One is the upper leather here. 
it's like an embossed croc calf and then on the bottom here it's a thicker leather it's the inside lining you can see on the edge it's thinned out and probably I need a new blade it's thinned out at the edge here thinned out at the edge here and here seems like nicely tanned leather aniline down you can see it's a little darker in the middle than on the outside but it seems to be a pretty good leather I mean over time you can see how it aged right it's a little darker um, but it the leather actually was good what wasn't good was the stitches and that's where they came apart and that's where I could pull it apart so easily also if you look at the belt it kind of bent a little bit you can see the curve curves up that's typically something that you get with belts especially cheaper belts as you wear them they really kind of create a curve I mean just look at this one here for example you can really see the bent of the belt yeah this is the um, L Edmonds belt and typically uh, I don't know hallmark of a not so expensive belt I would say next up L Edmonds here you can see the, on the edge here, it's edge painted. The Mont Blanc was edge painted too in a matching color of the leather. This here is distinctly darker. Just cut through the leather here so you can see what there is. And I'll try to just separate the layers just like the um, Mont Blanc one. So it seems like the elements, just like the Mont Blanc, is a very simple construction. You basically have two layers of leather right they're just cut on all ends thinned out at the edge and then sewn together same construction now the Mont Blanc was not really glued in between it was floating the uh, Allen Edmonds on the other hand is glued in between I think the difference is over time the glue may loosen and it may bulge. If you don't have glue in there to begin with, it may never show. But glue is okay. It's not a hallmark of a bad quality or anything. Now I'm just going to try to separate these layers here. There we go. You can see here I'm, I'm pulling. And actually the, the stitch density is so strong that I'm not taking that part off. So I have to cut it separately. Now you can also see there's this kind of other layer that is black in the middle of the belt. That's supposed to probably just make it a little bit thicker. Otherwise you have this other piece of leather here they had broguing and it glue on the inside. Now leather quality overall feels a bit cheaper I'd have to say it doesn't the finish is okay there's some wax in here it's okay for a belt but it's also nothing special let's look at this one here Brooks Brothers belt okay interesting dark layer and then a light layer even though from the front I mean you can tell this is a uniform brown this is kind of a finished brown but you wouldn't expect something that dark to be underneath of it let's cut it at an angle here can really see the black and white so over time your lining as this top layer will wear off um, it's obviously a pigment dyed letter you, you will really see uh, something black underneath which looks kind of odd I don't even know if it's a, a full grain leather or more like of a leather product doesn't seem to be the, the highest quality material. So this is the Brooks Brothers. You can see it's edge painted. There you go. Okay, yeah, so this is the brown upper leather looks like a full grain leather not like a leather product the 
bottom layer here, the lining letter, looks, looks odd. Yeah, I'd have to lap test it to t tell you exactly what it is, but this is not the highest quality leather. I tell you that. Of course, also at, you know, $98, you can have different expectations. But even here on top, you can see, you know, as soon as the top will come off, you will see a lighter color. Sometimes if you want to get a certain effect on top, where you want to almost like look into the leather, the bottom has to be lighter, like in this case, right? You wouldn't get this effect if it was all the same color underneath. So that's not necessarily a quality issue. You can have a uh, leather that's darker on top than underneath, but if you have this pigmented leather, like here, where it's really just one uniform layer of color on top of something, that's usually done to hide something that's underneath. Now let's look at the Hermes belt here. So you can see, you know, original Hermes, very nice um, stitch density all the way around. That was definitely better than on the um, Brooks Brothers one and the Allen Edmonds. Like you can see here, everything is very neatly, very neatly stitched. And then it's also edge painted here. You can see it's slightly thicker up here. So let's try to take that one apart. Again, this costs around $455, but it's not like you can just buy it separately. The whole belt was like $790, I think. So now you can see here clearly three layers of leather. So typically in a higher quality belt, you have more layers of leather. Hermes leathers are very nice. You can see they have this kind of scorched top. It's, it's embossed on it. So when you buy an Hermes product, you typically get a quality leather. You also pay a very high price, but at least you don't get crap. Um, on that note, check out our Is It Worth It Louis Vuitton video. And by the way, we've also started cutting apart shoes, so you can check that out and see what you find there. Okay, so you can see this is this leather here. Pretty much, you know, aniline dyed. The top leather. It's a double sided belt. But, um, yeah, good, good, decent quality. It's not the same color. But, um, again, you can't always have that for the effect. And then this middle layer is kind of this gray that has a. I don't know, almost like a glue or primer structure on top. You don't see any glue residue like you did on the Allen Edmonds, for example. Clear difference here, right? This is much more like the Mont Blanc belt that had these two. Very, very similar here. So you pull this off. two layers here. They're also edge painted. So you can see the thick layer in the middle is the thickest one. Gives the belt its thickness. But they're glued together and sewn. But they're glued very carefully and thinly. There we go. Okay, Hermes, three layer belt, two kind of embossed leathers, aniline dyed, plus a kind of grayish leather in the middle. Um, it's black on the one side. Just like what we saw on the Allen Edmonds belt on the inside here. Thickness wise, because there are three layers, this is thinner, the lining there is thinner. Workmanship is neat, but still the edge here is cut and then edge painted, just like an element's belt. 
or just like a Brooks Brothers belt or Mont Blanc belt. So far, all the belts have the same edge painting. Now let's look at the Ford Belvedere belt. I mean, just from the outset, you can see here, these are made in Portugal. The lining letter is from Italy. The top layer is from Germany, from Alpine cows with hedge fewer buck bites. So you just get perfectly grained leather. It's all super open pore aniline dyed. It's not embossed or anything where it's not hiding anything. It's all the quality hide you get. On the inside, we emboss the leather because when you have a belt on the inside, you automatically have creases. And when you pre-emboss the leather, it will crease there and not randomly in other parts. So that was the thought behind it. Just from the outset, you can tell this is quite a thick leather. It's much stiffer. And you can see it has double folded edges. Cutting it through, you'll see there's a lot more layers. Maybe if we cut it at an angle, you see it better. Maybe not a stronger angle. So we got the leather, that's the lining leather here. Then it's another liner in the, in the middle. Something else in the middle, not a liner, and then the outer layer. So you have five layers of leather. That's definitely the most complex belt we've seen so far. Also, you saw the edges here is uh, where we got the folded edges versus everyone else had the edge painted edges where they just cut something and then put paint on top to finish it. This is the actual leather. It's just thinned out at the edges and folded. So much more complex to make this for Belvedere belt than any other belt we, we've seen here. We also do this on our wallet and you can see how we cut apart a Ford Belvedere wallet in this video here. One thing that was really important for me was that in a Ford Belvedere product we do everything leather on the inside even though you may not see it and it's easy to cheat and put some filler material in there that's not as good. I, I didn't want that. Yeah, it's really hard to pull apart. So you can see we use thick thread here so we don't have this experience from Mont Blanc, but really thick stuff. If we cut the belt here, if you see this is the upper leather and it's folded here in the edges. Let's cut out the middle part. It's glued down. Then there's a layer of leather underneath that's lining it and keeping it, keeping it in shape. And you can see here, it's all the way folded in. Then you have another layer, this black layer, that goes on top of it. And then the same procedure on the other side with a green letter. You can clearly see here, green letter layer, then lining, and then folded to hold everything in place and keep everything in shape with a goal that you don't see the warping in the belt if you wear it over time. You can see the seam is so strong that I'm able to pull the leather apart, which in normal circumstances will not happen because this is so thick and solid, you will never rip that apart on its own. But it's over-engineered for a reason, and that is just that you can wear it for a long time. Now, the other thing is with for Belvedere products, we decided to have exchangeable buckles. So you can have all these buckles. Let's say you buy three buckles and three belts. You have nine possible combinations. Now, Hermes offers this as well, and so does Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc has a very similar system to the one at Fort Belvedere, which allows you to just exchange the different buckles. Um, the difference is the Fort Belvedere buckles have a much thicker gold and palladium plating, so they won't it won't wear off. Also, when you travel, it's nice to just bring two belts, three buckles. That's six combinations right there. So last but not least, let's look at the Gucci belt. Frankly, the feel of it 
It looks like a completely Pikmin diet letter that is embossed with a Gucci logo. You can see here three layer belt, upper leather, lining, lining leather, cut and edge painted here at the top. Almost seems like a glue layer here in between. But then that actually comes apart. Easy peasy. Yeah, this is like not glued together very much. Yeah, not super impressed by this. Overall, the leather feels just not very high end compared to the Hermes leather. It's it's not as nice. Construction wise, yeah, it has a three layers like the Hermes, but unlike the Hermes, it doesn't have a reversible buckle. It has just this like giant classic Gucci buckle. I don't know, in my mind it's a bit gaudy, but each of their own. I think for $490, uh, it's, it's overpriced. It's not quite as bad as the Louis Vuitton bag, which is, you know, PVC vinyl, at least the series leather. The mid layer isn't. I mean, workmanship seems all, you know, neat. The stitching is all neat and stuff, but the thread is very thin, so if it wears out, it'll gonna open up after a little while. These days too, there's a lot of people who talk about, oh, it's full grain leather, it's full grain leather, which is definitely a high quality leather, but it sometimes isn't, right? So just because it's printed on it, doesn't mean it is the highest quality. You can find full grain leathers, you know, calfskin leathers that sell for um, a third of what other tanneries do, just because they have a better understanding of tanning the, the color consistency is there, the feel, the subtlety. There's definitely differences even among top grain leathers. And oftentimes I see, you know, like cheaper brands like top grain leather, where the whole belt is $25. Well, this is from Chinese tanneries. They use Zamek buckles, not solid brass. Like, you know, the the gold price that we pay is much higher than the, the retail price and all the marketing costs you, you pay for those. Cutting those belts open, I hope was interesting and you learned a few things. If you enjoyed the cutting apart, check out our, our series with shoes and wallets and you'll probably also like the Is It Worth It series where we just figure out if your hard money is worth it or not. <laughs>